WSDQ Dunlap, WEPG South Pittsburgh, The Copperhead, WSDT Saudi Daisy, Chattanooga. The viewpoints expressed on Liberty Works Radio Network are not necessarily those of the network, its affiliates, or sponsors. This is Liberty Works Radio Network. Now live from coast to coast and around the globe, more real talk, the kind you want, on Liberty Works Radio Network. Good afternoon. This is Liberty Works Radio Network. This is Nichols and Hale, Liberty's Warriors, uh, Wednesday at 4 o'clock on the East Coast, and and, uh, and and what is it, the 1 o'clock on the West Coast. Yeah, yep. But, uh, how Beautiful you doing, day today. Good. I'm you're, doing real good. You're fired up, I can tell. Fired up, yeah, I you th- am. You think these topics today are good ones? Um, yeah, I do. What we're planning on talking about, folks, and not necessarily in this order, but uh, we're going to talk about the first clause of the Second Amendment. We're not going to talk about the right to keep and bear arms. We're talking about the, the first one, which is a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state. And uh, then we're going to talk about uh, uh, some things that have happened in local politics with uh, some local uh, Republican, young Republican uh, clubs. <laughs> <laughs> and then I also brought in just because we I I felt like I've been so mean to everybody lately. I'm going to we're going to go over uh, George Washington's rules of civility and decent behavior. And if you're on your if you're on your uh, uh computer, which most of y'all are, uh you can go and you can uh, uh get I bought a book at at a uh, at a historical monument down in South Carolina, but uh but you don't have to do that. You can look get them up on on the uh, on the computer and look at them. And uh so anyway, so what's happening, Joanne? You, you're you're uh, you're fired up about uh, about local Republicans, aren't you? Well, I'm sick. You know, I'd like to find a local Republican, <laughs> Republican other than me and you. I mean, and, and Rob, maybe Robin Fraser and Pastor Whitney. You know, where are they? I mean, I don't know. I and think they've all run away and hidden into a cave somewhere uh, under the title of an independent party. Right now, we live in a we live in a blue state, folks. We're not trying to play inside baseball with you. You know, but we're from Maryland. Which is as blue as they get, but there is a Republican Party here, believe it or not, and uh, and uh, I think the same problems that we're having with our Republican Party are being had by Republican parties, for sure, all across the country Absolutely. and mostly in the Northeast. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the the problem we have is the the changing uh, the changing definition of what a conservative is. Well, you think that they are changing the definition. I think we have Cloward and Piven infiltrators. And that, that could That's be true. That's what I think they could are. Be true. I think they are uh, progressives from the left, and I think this has been going on for decades. And, you know, when it first started to go on, it was kind of the scratch-your-head stuff. Like, right. Like, uh, what's going on here? This guy doesn't really seem to click all the way with me, but I guess he clicks with 70%. And remember, we used to hear all that mantra, well, if if you can get along with them seventy percent of the time, and uh, that's a good thing, you yeah, know, that's better than right. It's better than not getting along with them at all. They, they used all of that kind of of indoctrination to 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 try to get people to lower their standards, right, right, of of what they expected from politicians and. You know, at that time, I didn't even know what the Constitution said, to be quite honest with you. I I just knew that I was conservative, you know. And these people just were not cutting it for me. You know, the the only one that was even even made me smile, but he but was Ronald Reagan, and he still never cut any of the government and but you know undid any of the damage that he talked well though oh he talked well and he made people feel good you know and and the economy came back rah 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 people have money in their pockets and you know that's a good thing i'm not saying that that's not a good thing but i think when when we just focus on those things instead of the principled things um you have a lot of rotten stuff that goes on in society and right. it's tolerated. I think it, we can have a good economy without that if we get back to the right principles, you know, and get government out and really do cut government down to where it should be. Right. Well, you saw that that this just this week uh, John Boehner said that it's going to be impossible to ever cut the size of government or to right. uh, cut the amount of money spent on government. Yeah. Well, and you I, know, when anybody, anytime anybody ever says is so arrogant to make statements like that. 
that makes me even more determined. Well, especially he, he got he got the majority in the House of Representatives saying they would cut government and they would cut spending and they would cut taxes, right. and then it turns out you know, six years later he was lying. Right. And uh, and uh, you know. Well, that, that's what I mean about an infiltrator. This is this is a classic example right. of someone who it's just like when you have somebody who, you know, a, a guy who likes guys and they try really hard. And to pretend that they like girls, right? And they live a, a, a completely different life. That they have two lives, actually. Right. Sometimes they get married, they have families, they have wives, and then they have this double life. It's the same thing with these people that infiltrate the the, the party, and they're doing it. I, I think it's it's a complete planned thing. I mean, I think they're absolutely coming in and infiltrating the party to find out what's going on with the people that are like you and me that are right. conservative, and then they run back to the rat hole and tell, you know, uh, the Democrats all of what we're doing, and they, they flank us. Right, right. And they, they, they want to have a big tent, don't you know? Yeah, big tent, <laughs> my you-know-what. Well, I you mean, know, the, when I grew up in Montgomery County, and, and – uh, uh, during a lot of that time, we had Gilbert Goody as a, as a uh, congressman, a Republican, and Connie Morella, a re- other Republican. Yep. But, of course, both those people supported abortion. Uh-huh. Uh, both those people were for big government. His buddy with John McCain, real good buddy with John right. McCain. Right, and, and, and Montgomery County, Maryland, is just north and a little west of parts of it uh, of Washington, D.C. Mm-hmm. So you're getting a lot of government workers there. Yep. And... Uh, and I remember back, this is way back in like 1970s, uh, 1974, I was just starting law school, and my wife and I were living in Catonsville, and uh, I guess it wasn't 74 because we weren't married, it was 76 when we got married, so I guess it was about second year of law school. Anyway, I'm living in Catonsville, and I'm listening to a, a Baltimore talk show, and Baltimore t- talk show has a call-in guy, the guy calls in and says, you know what the trouble with, with the United States of America is? And the host says, well, I don't know what, and the guy says... Silver Spring, Maryland. <laughs> and I said, I was, I'm, I was hurt. I said, no, I'm from Silver Spring. What's this guy talking about? Yeah. He, and, and the the, uh, the uh, commentator or the, or the host of the show said it's a pretty much the same thing. You know, what's what's wrong with Silver Spring? He said, well, in 1952, that was the year I was born, 1952, there was nothing there, just just houses and cows and things like that. And this was 1976, I guess. I guess it was the fall of 76. And, and he says now it's the second largest city in Maryland. Yeah. And it was unincorporated. It was just a sprawl. It's still I mean, it just a, shows you the a way government. Mess. Yeah. That's right. And it's all and, and it's all because of the growth of the federal government. Yeah. Yep. There's no, there, nobody makes anything in Silver Spring, Maryland. No. Just, nobody makes anything in Maryland. <laughs> not anymore. We used to. I know we did. You know, I mean, the Golden Gate Bridge in, in California was yeah. built with steel uh, made in Sparrows Point. I know. I know. But, we but used to we used to make a lot of things. Cars you know? and trucks, yep. all kinds of things. Yep. Bad. Right. It, really it is. is. It is. But but the, the, uh, Gilbert Goody and and uh, and Connie Morella, I always had the feeling were were shunned somehow by the Democrats. Yeah. So they said, okay, we'll run as Republicans. Yep. Well, Be- because they really yeah. voted. They voted with the Democrats all the time. Right. Wayne Gilchrist. She was real good friends with Wayne Gilchrist. And he's from the Eastern Shore, yep. right? Yeah. Well, yep. He was he was uh, in the uh, first district. I right. Think. Where 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 Andy Harris yep. is now. And. Uh, Real good friends with uh, Russ Feingold, who yep. <laughs> he's super lib. I mean, he's like super duper lib in in the sen- in the uh, Senate, you know, right. U.S. Senate, uh, and and real good friends with McCain, and they were all like the little foursome when that McCain Feingold bill was was. Uh, floating around, you know, right. for it's campaign to, finance. It's supposed to be campaign finance reform. And uh, I remember Bush uh, was the president. He said, I don't think this is constitutional. Uh, and I was well, thinking, it, is, well, it wasn't. It, it was overturned. Um, well, there was some Institute up- for Justice took it in front of the Supreme Court. That was that Citizens United case. Oh, that was, okay. That's, that's little, what overturned. That's a little bit different, though, because originally it went to the Supreme Court on some something else and was affirmed. Oh, really? Yeah. And well, the, uh, the It's Mc- dead now. The McCain-Feingold, <laughs> uh, the... Uh, uh, and uh, I remember Bush was saying, "I'm going to sign this, but I know it's unconstitutional." And I, I was thinking, "You idiot, you bum! What are you signing it for? If you think it's unconstitutional, don't sign it." But right. he did, and, yeah. it, and the courts upheld it for many right. for many years. Right. And and, uh, and and he fell down and didn't do his job. Right. And the Republicans in Congress didn't do their job. Nope. 
and which is to protect us. What's you know, we what's that 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 uh, question that tricked up uh, Larry Hogan uh, during the primary last year? Uh, uh, <laughs> what? What is what, the purpose? What's the purpose of government? And oh he my goodness! It. He hung oh, up he, on the guy. He couldn't. He said it first. He said that it was a really hard question. That's right. And then he said it was a really stupid question. Said it was the craziest question he yeah, ever heard. Yeah, and then he hung up. Right. Yep. Yep. But in the Declaration of Independence, folks, the reason we 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 mention this is because it, it it was funny to listen to that interview because because the guy who was t- talking to him did tape it. And yeah, Larry's uh, cutting government. He just opened up the state police over there. And, uh, yeah, well, who, who knows what's going to happen know. there? But but it says <laughs> it says that uh, talks about we hold these truths to be self-evident. This is the Declaration of Independence, second paragraph, that all men are created equal, and that they are endowed by their Creator with certain una- unalienable rights. I can never say that word. That among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And then here's the next line. It's a kicker. That to secure these rights, governments are inst- instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. So, so uh, the answer is really simple: that that it, the purpose of government is to secure the rights, the unalienable God-given rights. Uh, that, it's that, a very simple you know, thing. Very, very it's simple. Not, not a whole lot to it. I don't know why we're paying these people well, all this money. Because they want it to be to provide <laughs> welfare and worldwide warfare mm-hmm. and all kinds of things that that really the federal government's not supposed to deal with. Right. Yep. But, but the whole concept of, of the Constitution being a limited uh, grant of power from the states, limited and, and enumerated grant of power from the states to the to the federal government, totally washed out. Right. Because now the federal government, everybody just assumes the federal government runs everything and should run everything, when they're not supposed to run everything. And they also assume, still, I still hear, um, even. Ted Cruz says we're one Supreme Court justice away from disaster. I mean, that's such how manure. can this guy say this stuff? Well, I mean, you know, he, he's one of the good ones running. I mean, how can he say this stuff? Because because everybody's <laughs> brainwashed into thinking that those nine people have the last word on every law, and they can make up their own law too. I mean, they rewrote Obamacare twice yeah. rather than strike it down. Well, look what happened last night in in America, all over America. Oh, on the, we on the election. We had Kentucky governor, you know, a new uh, a Republican governor, which is like. How many? I mean, it's unheard of. Second time in the last 40 yeah. or 50 years, then, I think. Then, then the, the sheriff out there in uh, San Francisco, the the sanctuary city sheriff, you know, right. who, uh, he lost his seat. I mean. In a big way, too, I think. In a very big way. Right. Yeah. In San Francisco, come on. <laughs> I mean, you tell me people aren't pissed off. Well, I think that looks good for Donald Trump as long as he doesn't yep, uh, change it does. his tune. It looks very good for and, Trump. And uh, I know people are just tired of tired of of the same old junk. We're yep. get, we get he, promised things, and we, they ne- and the Republicans never, ever deliver. Yeah, that's the one danger they have. But that maybe a large number of us are just going to. I think sit, sit I out. think most people are, are just simply want to send a message. You know, it, it may may not even be that they love Trump that much. It's just right. they don't want any of these establishment people anymore. They don't trust them. No. And how and, could you? How could you uh, trust? I don't know. I mean, it would be like, you know, taking back a cheating husband, you know, 25 times, you know, and, and, and you've got every venereal disease <laughs> <laughs> possible, you're, you're you know. You're really taking it right down to the gutter there, Joanne. <laughs> well, Goodness I gracious. mean, I, look, I want it to sink in good, okay? I want people to get it, man. That, that's what I this got, is. I got the word picture. <laughs> I'm trying to get out of my mind. Yeah, you know, it's like uh, it's like the guy that beats the heck out of you, and you know you need plastic surgery because your face has been so mutilated, but you keep taking them back. Right. People have had it. Okay. Uh, the, the line in the sand is there. It's it's over. People have had it, and and I really do believe that um, they're going to have to pull a big time rabbit out of their hat this time on fraud to turn it their way. I to really turn it do. The Democrat way? Yeah, I really do. Yeah, I think the one, I, like I said, started to say earlier, that the one way that it may turn out well for the Democrats is so many Republicans say, I'm not going to go vote this time. <laughs> I don't think. I don't, Maybe not. You know Maybe what? Not. I was so I mad when you're, Boehner, you're, when you're, Boehner you're, said. You're thinking like these people that we get into it with on, on Facebook, these fake Republicans. You think they're there's a lot of them. There's not a Maybe lot not. of them. Maybe now, not. They're just in control right now. Well, he, the Boehner, the, the leader of the House, yeah. uh, and uh, of course he, he just represents his, his big donors. But uh, 
but he, he tells us, hey, it'll never work. We'll never cut government. Yep. But, folks, we're going to be back. we got a lot of stuff. We're going to get into George Washington's rules of civility, and uh, we've broken all of them, I think. <laughs> <laughs> And we're back. It's the uh, Nichols and Hale Liberty's Warriors on Liberty Works Radio Network, and we're coming to you from beautiful downtown Westminster, Maryland, where God gave us a beautiful day today. Yes, yeah, gorgeous. It was up in the 70s. I think it's still in the 60s right now. Yep. yep. And uh, in any case, we're, we're going to talk a little bit about George Washington's rules of civility and decent behavior, because Joanne and I have been so mean to people on <laughs> Facebook. <laughs> we're admonished all the time. Yeah, I get <laughs> unfriended like. I get if I if I didn't get unfriended so much, I would probably have like five thousand friends. That'd be the limit. Yeah, that'd be the limit. So yeah. so uh, so maybe but you should be a little bit nicer so you can hit the five thousand mark. I don't want to be nice. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm mad. I'm angry, and well, I don't want to be nice. One thing about old George, though, I mean, people say, well, he didn't know this and he didn't know that, and what does he know about? I I think he knew a lot about human nature. That's why he went from being uh, relatively. It, he wasn't ever poor, but but relatively uh, not well off to being right. very successful right. in a lot of different things, the military and in, in, uh, business, farming, all kinds of things. But uh, he had these rules of uh, civility and decent behavior, mm-hmm. and we're going to go through a, a few of them one by one and uh, and see what you all think. Joanne, what's, what's his first rule of decent okay. behavior? Okay, it says, every action done in company ought to be with some sign of respect to those that are present. Well, that's a good one. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and w- one of the things about Facebook <laughs> is we're not in the other people's company. And so yeah. maybe we're a little too, too well, direct. Well, no, I give people respect. But oh, when I... they're not respectful to me, then it's, right. it's, it's, it's right. every man for himself. But, but, <laughs> but I think in com- when, we're, when we're in polite company in person, yeah, we're much nicer to people than we are oh, on, absolutely. On, on Facebook yeah. or on this on this radio show. We're not really that bad yeah, about somebody people. Somebody came place. up to me one time and said, "I own a bill collecting company, and you would be a great bill collector." Yeah. And I said, "Huh? Why?" He said, "Because you're really smart, but you have street smarts. That's what makes you good. You know how to like get down in the gutter." <laughs> <laughs> and I started to laugh because he had me pig. I don't know. I well, I, 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 you're very smart, and you do, and you do uh, <laughs> can you get to the heart of the matter. I do but sit down in the gutter too. Well, but, but read that first one again. I think you need this one. <laughs> I need. I, I, I need to I read all these. I didn't think you needed this one, but I think you do. Read that one first one over again. Every action done in company ought to be ought to be with some sign of respect to those that are present. Okay. Remember that one. <laughs> yeah, I, I I do show respect. Honestly, I do. You do. Yeah, I've, I've I never do. seen you. I've never seen you blow up in public at anybody. Uh, well, I have, but well, but don't 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 I have, burst my bubble now. You have to really push me to make me blow up like that. Okay. What's what's number two down there? When in company, put not your hands to any part of the body. Not. Not usually discovered. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess so. That means like when a when a baseball player is like, coming up to to like bat, don't scratch your butt, or or, your, or the front of yourself <laughs> yeah, either. Right. Don't, don't, don't adjust don't that. Don't adjust yourself. Don't adjust that the cup uh, as before, as you're going up to bat or yeah, whatever. Yeah, scratch uh, whatever. What is right, it? but that's it's, a good that's a good one. Don't don't touch any part of your body not normally discovered, like your nose, for example. Mm-hmm. And, and the things like that. I guess some people, when they're driving in their car, sometimes forget that there they're, they're are windows in the car, yeah. and they mess with all kinds of parts of their face it's and everything. Oh, you haven't seen that? No. Oh, Seinfeld made a, a, a zillion dollars to oh, doing a couple Seinfeld. of shows about that. Seinfeld it's, true. <laughs> it's true. <though. laughs> Seinfeld was a great show. In it fact, was. I think we're living in a Seinfeld. I think Seinfeld has become complete real life. <laughs> Have you ever seen Larry David's show? He oh, was, uh, Curb, Curb Your Enthusiasm? That is, Are you that's, kidding me? I've I, got all the DVDs. Oh, uh, do you? Oh, they're funny. I, I, uh, it's, really gut, it's really gutter stuff, but it's funny. It's, every, uh, my, my oldest daughter, uh, Sarah, is very sophisticated, but she turned that on, turned her mother and I on to that show. And we have a love-hate relationship with it. We'll watch a couple episodes and think, oh, that's pretty funny. We'll watch the next one and go, oh, my gosh. We're, and a neighbor. And, and, that, and, that disgusting neighbor woman, uh, what was it, you know, Cheryl's friend, 
His wife, Cheryl, her, her friend, that real loud mouth. Oh, the one that, that was... Uh, What's her name? She's, like, so disgusting. Are you talking about the, the agent's wife? Yeah. Yeah, that guy, that girl. Yeah, but the in any, that guy's wife. In any case, I think, we're li- I think we're living in that show. Seinfeld was very tame compared to Curb ah. Your Enthusiasm. Extremely tame. Right, right. And it was, and it was kind of risque uh, for its time. Well, yeah, Larry David wrote the Seinfeld show, right. didn't he? Right, right. Yeah. Right. He's a mess, that Larry David. Oh, he is. He, he said he was just on uh, Saturday He went to the Night University Night. of Maryland. Did you did know that? Did he really? Yeah. A lot, of, a lot of famous people did. Oh, I'll uh, be darned. But, I bet uh, it was uh, fun in that dorm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, because he seems like a real weird guy. Here's a guy, he's a guy who very touches. Very strange guy. I bet you he puts his hands all over the place where it That's what I was, just, I was just thinking. <laughs> because <laughs> he does all kinds of things. Okay, that was, that was number two. What was, what's number three? Okay, number three, showing nothing to your friend that may afraid him. Okay, so I guess don't, don't uh, that could be a number of things. <laughs> My mind is not in a good place no, right no, now. No practical jokes. Yeah. Uh, I guess. I, guess, I don't and know if I like that very much. <laughs> okay, I mean, Washington knows. Well, he probably wasn't known for his sense of humor. Yeah. yeah. But, but he had a lot of people liking him. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, he sounds like Ben Carson. <laughs> Boring. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to get after you about Ben Carson well, last no, week, know, but ben we didn't Carson's have to great, time. But he is kind of boring, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, I don't think he's that great either. I mean, he's yeah, a, I know you don't, but I but, like him because uh, he's a Christian. Yeah, he says he is. He is. He says he is, he but, is. He, but there's this rumor out that he voted for Obama. No, I, he I, did not vote for Obama. Well, no way. It's a secret ballot, so we'll never know. But I, I think I think my son told me that there was some recording of him saying that he had voted for Obama at I, least one I'd time. Have to, I'd have to hear it hear him say it and know it was his voice okay because i don't believe it i really don't because i tell you i honest to god he did he took care of my friend's kid and i and i spent a little time around this man 20 years ago he's not he's not a lefty okay all right he was at one time we may find he was oh yeah before ronald reagan yeah he was he was uh a democrat he's how old is he Uh, he switched. He switched when when uh, Carter was president. Yeah. That's what made him switch to. Uh, so is he in? Our, is he in his sixties or late fifties? How old is he? He's like our age. Yeah. Okay. Really old then. You may, he might be a little you're bit older. Tw- than you're only twenty five. Might be a little bit older than we are. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. It's hard to tell black people age much better than we do. You're such a racist. I was just wondering. What you're <laughs> <laughs> it's true, man. They, they 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 do not age. They I mean they look young forever. Except they keep they keep dying of uh, of strokes and heart attacks because yeah. of the high yeah, blood pressure true. and stuff. It's true, but he's very healthy. Well, okay. I like him. All right. He, I know I know is, that. I know that. I know he comes I'm gonna, off like I'm going to be civil and decent and use decent behavior and not tear you up because <laughs> of that, but 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 uh like a, I'd like to sometimes, but but we won't, we'll skip that. What's number four? Okay, number four. In the presence of others, sing not to yourself with a humming noise, nor drum with your fingers or feet. That's a big one. A big one. What? Which way? Drumming with your fingers or feet? Or? All of it. Okay. It, it, when, I cannot stand it when people do that. Is that right? Yeah. So I know how to get under your skin now. So all I do is start well, singing and a song. Well, my brother-in-law did it last night. We were over. I mean, he was like banging and drumming, and and we finally his wife had to look at him and say, "Tom, will you <laughs> shut up?" You know. And I, and I was like, "Really? Good grief! What's wrong?" What about singing? I don't mind singing as long as it's not hard rock. Like any of no. them. Not when you're in company with people. Right. You don't do that. You, because it, it it's 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 like a sign of like arrogance, like you're self centered and off in so. own little land and you're not but, connecting with the other people. But what if no I am irritates me. But what people. if I am self centered and off in my own little land and not connecting with other people? Well, can then, I do, can I just be Yeah, the, yeah you be can do that, but then <laughs> but then uh, but then I don't like being around you. That's the thing. All right, so then we yeah. have then we have to watch out for the decent behavior yeah. then. Yeah, okay. I, th- that's a big one. And folks we're going we're going through some of George Washington's rules of civility and decent behavior. Oh, um, this the, next one is unbelievable. And this is great. We're coming up to number five. George, George what was number I five? got to read this to my <laughs> sister-in-law. <laughs> if you cough, sneeze, sigh, or yawn, do it not loud, but privately, and speak not in your yawning, but put your handkerchief or hand before your face and turn aside. 
<laughs> I have, I'm telling you, I have a sister-in-law that when she sneezes, she breaks a sound barrier. I'm telling you. I've never Is that right? Seen, oh, my God. I mean, I could be in, in a car next to her and her husband in another car, and I can hear her. That's how loud I'm guilty is. of that. I'm a loud sneezer, yeah. that, that's for sure. Read number five again from the okay. beginning. If you cough, sneeze, sigh, or yawn, do it not loud but privately, and speak not in your yawning, but put your handkerchief or hand before your face and turn aside. That's a big one. You know, the, the, uh, the one of the pet peeves I have is that my, I had an Aunt Margaret who, who was in her 90s when she passed away, but... but uh, uh, she used to insist we had handkerchiefs with us all the time. I think that's great. And I think it is too. I, I'd give my I give my kids gifts of handkerchiefs, and they uh-huh. and they give them back to me. The I next, used to have to year. iron my dad's handkerchiefs when but, I was a little girl. But yeah. you know what? Know what they've been taught to do? It's, it's Kathleen Sebelius and all these things. The last few years they were in school was to sneeze or cough into your into your uh, elbow. And it gets so your clothes messed up. It's just gross. That's uh, just, just reach back, get your handkerchief, and and, and sneeze mm-hmm. in that. But people, that's out of style now. If you go to buy handkerchiefs, it is tough to buy handkerchiefs, especially for women. Wow. Because I, I, I've tried to do this because I tried to get them for my daughter. I had to buy them men's handkerchiefs. Maybe that's why they gave wow. them back to me the next year. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> they regifted them. You don't see a lot of handkerchiefs you don't. for women. You don't. Well, we've got somebody on the line here. We've got Ron on the line. Okay. Is this, is this the famous... And the handsome and talented uh, Ron Nichols. <laughs> Ron, is well, that you? Yeah, I guess you shouldn't uh, go that far, but I, I just wanted to, to call in to say. I talented is what I wanted to say. <laughs> Listen, I should have said. It's, a, it's an absolute fact that black people do age exactly like white people do. I mean, it, I mean, this, you know, that one year to them is one year to us. Same they thing. I just wanted to clear that up. <laughs> well, I'm glad you did, and, and I'm glad you corrected her uh, when you're not in her presence, so she can't hit you now. <laughs> I know. That's right. It's true. So, uh, this is a very interesting. Um, what are these uh, do's and don'ts that? Uh, this is um. This, this is, a, is George Washington's <laughs> rules of civility and decent behavior. Written back in the 1700s. I can't. I can't hear her, oh, but I can hear oh, you. Uh, you got to speak up. You, 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 okay. you can hear you. Okay. It is George Washington's rules of civility and decent behavior. Oh. Okay. Now, I was at a I was at a place called 96 in South Carolina, where there was a, a Revolutionary War battle uh, back when my son was in Georgia, and and I, I wanted to buy something that's really nice gift shop, and I I didn't have that much money. It was five bucks or something. I bought I bought that. So uh, that's how that's how we got into this trouble. Hey, Bill's got a question for you about the gun range behind the the dump. No, I don't know if we need to have the whole world know that. But <laughs> but, but uh, Ron, is, is, do you know how much it costs to join that range? Uh, yeah, it's a hundred dollars a year, and then you got to work twenty hours. Oh, that's cheap. But the twenty yeah. hours, you got to work twenty hours with the clean up and and. Uh, yeah, yeah, we do all kind of stuff, forestry work, and. No, and, no, no, uh, not your gun range. It's Mayberry, the Mayberry the gun range. He, yeah. He's talking about Mayberry, but 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 she's talking about. There's, she says there's one behind the dump in Westminster. Oh yeah, that one is a is a county one, and that's fifty dollars a year, and you oh, don't have I, to do anything. It's oh okay. You don't have to. Do all, it's a two hundred yard range. I, 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 I'm I'm way past that one, like way past that one. So you are. One, what are you What are you shooting at? Five hundred, a thousand? Yeah, yards? I'm shooting at like between five and six hundred yards right now. So. Well, I've always been very nice to you, Ron. So if you <laughs> <laughs> well, I hey, say look, nice when, things about you all the time. So about five, five or six hundred <laughs> yards away, don't don't yeah. pull the trigger on me. <laughs> the way I figure it, Bill, with my age, the further I, away, I am away from the action, the better. You know, because I, I don't want to have to run fast, and I don't want to have to fight anybody, you know, hand to hand. You know, so. I want to be as far away as I possibly can when the doo doo hits the fan. You know. So. Well, that's good. Also, if you have a nice steady spot, they might not even see where the shot came from. Yeah, and uh, you know, George Washington, speaking on the subject here, you know, he was quite a man. Talking about shooting, and I mean, he shot and rode, and and he was a scavenger, and a he, you know, the etiquette uh, for him, I'm sure. Uh, was probably most of the time around a campfire of some sort because he was, uh, you know, he was a surveyor and he was all up and down the uh, CNO Canal. One of the things about him that I, I was coming to a break, Ron. Uh, ha- hold that thought, on, and we'll on. see you in, fi- in five minutes. 
on Liberty Works Radio Network. And we're back. It's Liberty Works Radio Network, Nichols and Hale, Liberty's Warriors, Bill Hale and Joanne Nichols. And we have, as, as our special guest this afternoon, the handsome and multi-talented uh, Ron Nichols. And we've been talking about a lot of different stuff. And, and, and one of the things, Ron, you had said you, you like to shoot it from, from uh, long distances, right? Yeah. I was telling my, my, my youngest daughter, who is, is a good shooter, She's better than I am, really, and which really hurts my feelings. But because I'm teaching her and she's out shooting me, but but uh, I was telling her what you got to be able to do is to be able to shoot at people who are moving, and uh, be able to shoot when they're shooting back at you. And and and, and she's she's very good sitting at the at the bench, you know, and and uh, doing the bench shooting, and and right. she's still pretty good standing up. But you got to be able to to move and shoot. And kneel and shoot and and sit and shoot and all that stuff. Do you practice all the different positions, or are you just in a prone position the whole time? No, actually, I I go from different positions, and I also go from off the bench to behind a log, or you know, just sitting on the ground and sitting positions and laying positions. Yeah, it's important. Well, I want to be near you when the shooting starts. Because, yeah. Okay. Because uh, you know you know what you're doing then. If yeah. you're not if you're not shooting, you're moving, and if you're not not. Uh, you have to go out to that place in Nevada, that front site. I get. Heard I've heard of it. I've heard yeah. of it. I'm the cheapskate, yeah. though. So, so, uh, so. Pastor Whitney went. Yeah. So, getting back to George Washington. Huh? Yeah. You know, he had, he actually. Uh, you know, Joanne will tell you that her and I we rode on a bicycle trip, uh, 185 miles of the CNO Canal, and uh, we did it in five days. We stayed at bed and breakfast along the way, and. We did a lot of history searching, and uh, I found out that George Washington was in business with some other gentlemen, and they actually, before the canal was actually built, um, they had a company called the Potomac Company. Right. And what they did was they did a short, small little canals, uh, short distances to circumvent the very uh, tough terrain in the Potomac River, and they would then dump the people back into the Potomac, and then they would go up, and then when they got to a place where they couldn't get up any higher, they would go back in the canal. And he, uh, you know, he this was way, way before the actual canal was done, but he he and these gentlemen, uh, businessmen, they started the whole idea because he had uh, surveyed all the way up to Cumberland, Maryland, and, and uh, you know, he was up there in Fort Cumberland, you know, when uh, right. I, I think it was the French uh, and Indian conflict now, he up there and he so was he, a, he was he knew uh, that area really well right and he 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 uh, started the French Indian War up there near Fort Necessity okay. off of Route 40 just as you cross from Maryland into Pennsylvania he mm-hmm. he got the jump on uh, a man named Jumonville and uh, he and some some Virginians and some Indians he was with uh, attacked the French they were sort of an oops and uh, and the, the Indians went ahead and murdered this one guy Jumonville which started started the French and Indian War mm-hmm. But uh, but in any case, he was a go-getter. I mean, he was always moving. He didn't have a TV set to watch, and, and didn't, <laughs> yeah, didn't, that's didn't right. have a cell phone either, and and so he didn't have wasn't always staring at that. So yep. So yep. Uh, he was my he, favorite president, by the way. <laughs> my, he's, he, I, I guess he's mine too. Tough guy, man. Real he tough. He was tough because he when he was young, he was out there surveying, and uh, he they sent him on a trip before the French Indian War, all the way up to. Um, uh, the the uh, Lake Erie, I forget the uh, mm-hmm. for the name of the fort. They were sent up to talk to the French, and the French laughed at him. But he he and another guy made that whole trip in, in the winter time, uh, yeah. there and back. When you went to Cumberland on the bikes, did you and Joanne uh, start in Cumberland and ride down, or start in Georgetown and ride up? We we went from Cumberland and rode down to oh, okay. uh, Georgetown. I guess that's slightly easier, slightly more uh, downhill. Yeah, but you know it's a railroad. Uh, I mean, it's uh, they kept that. Uh, I'm sorry, not runs alongside the railroad, but they kept that uh, canal uh, towpath as pretty much level as possible, so that the animals didn't have to pull the barges uphill at all too much. Oh, I guess that's right. That's right. Yeah, so they kept it. They kept it pretty flat. I mean, it's uh, maybe a slight grade one way or the other, but you know, it's a funny thing when you say I'm going to ride 185 miles. People say, well, is there any hills? You got to remember, you know, the hills go both ways. You could be drifting downhill. And if you're on a hill, or you can be pedaling uphill. But if you're going flat, you're always pedaling. So, yeah. Yeah. you know, so it's. Uh, but we were in shape then, weren't we, Joe? Yeah. 
Not anymore. Yeah. So don't don't tell these stories about yourself, Joanne. For a 25 year old, you're in very good shape. But let, let me let's go to number six here. Okay. We, the folks, these are uh, George. Hey, listen, Washington I've got to go. I've got to go back to work. I got a All customer. Right. Oh, okay. Well, you go make money. Okay. Take care. See you, Thanks, See you guys. Bye. Bye. Okay. Number six. Sleep not when others speak. Sit not when others stand. Speak not when you should hold your peace. Walk not. Walk not on when others stop. Wow. That's a good one. There's a lot in that one, too. Sleep not when others speak. Let's start with that clause right there. I was in court yesterday in Howard (laughs) County. I probably should, but I don't know if anybody's listening from there anyway. But but uh, in Howard County, Maryland, Ellicott City is the the uh, the uh, county seat, and and uh, this one judge, a wonderful woman, she was going real slow though, and uh, uh, one of the bailiffs was just sawed logs. He he was off off to the side, and uh, and it caused a great deal of laughter. The judge never noticed that that, that he was sleeping, and, and I caught myself. With closing my eyes every now and then too. It yeah. was it was a slow morning. Wow. But they dropped the case against my guy, so I was happy. But uh, but uh, what's the next clause? After- Sit not when others stand. Oh, that's that's a good one too. That is a good one. Absolutely. Yeah. You should- I mean, it's just polite because yeah. you're showing respect that's for them. And this is a big one. Speak not when you should hold your peace. Oh, I need that one. I need to learn more about that. We we all need that one. Yeah. It, you know, in law school, there's two things they didn't teach you, which was the, the first two rules of being a lawyer. Rule one was always get paid. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been as good at that as I should be. I, uh, people are always have, give me a sad story, and I say, well, okay, I'll do this, and then yeah. taking half up front and never see any other half. Oh, gosh. but but. I shouldn't tell you. I'll get maybe increase my number of calls, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the second one is, shut up when you're ahead. Uh-huh. And and really, you can do a lot as an attorney or as a salesperson. Probably very hard to do. Too. And it is very difficult. I've done a lot of sales in my life, and and and, it's, and I look back at a lot of them, the ones that I missed, and uh, and I've had I've had coaches tell me, you know. You talk, you talk too much on that one. Uh, you know, if, if I ever if I had taped or something, they would say you just, you had the sale. You just you talked them you talked them into the into it, then you talked them out of it. I'll be darned. And uh, so, so maybe we should just be quiet these next hour and a half on the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that ought to go over real well. What's the next? Okay, clause the next one, one is walk not on when others stop. So, you know, when people stop, you stop. Yeah, you're, you're you don't part, walk you're part ahead of, the, of your of your party. You're part of the group, so right. stay with the group. Yeah. So we're doing George Washington's Rules of Civility and Decent Behavior, and uh, this was written back in the 1700s. Things he lived by, things he wrote down. What's number seven, Joanne? Put not off your clothes in the presence of others. <laughs> okay, <laughs> nor go out, nor go out your chamber half dressed. <laughs> Okay. Well, you know, when, I agree with that. <laughs> when they went to taverns and, and inns and hotels and stuff, and they didn't really have Motel 6 or or, uh, okay. or the Four Seasons or anything like that, and you often shared rooms with people. Oh, okay. And, and uh, you, know, you often shared beds with people. Oh, my. And uh, so that, that I guess that, that came in handy. I guess. Now there's a lot of people who've made probably the Kardashians and uh, there's there's <laughs> thousands and thousands of female uh, movie stars and models and stuff that have have, have not lived by that. They've blown that to smithereens. And they've done yeah. very well. Yeah, know? they have. They're <laughs> rich as it can be. Yeah, right. they really well, are. If men take their clothes off, everybody objects. Yeah, well, but it, or most people object. If women take their clothes off, yeah. generally I'm speaking, not, I don't like it when anybody takes their clothes right. off. To be honest with you, it doesn't do anything for me. I'd well, rather imagine. Most men, though, when women take their clothes off, they don't stop anybody. Yeah, men, <laughs> men love it. All, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, right? <laughs> That's right. Okay, right. number eight. At play and at fire, it is good manners to give place to the last comer and affect not to speak louder than ordinary. Uh-huh. At play and at the fire, mm-hmm. it is good manners. Ma- to give place not to the last comer, and affect not to speak oh, to louder. give place to the last comer. Right, to the last comer, and affect not to speak louder than ordinary. 
there's always room for one more. My mother used to say, and, and I guess near the fire too, you want to you want them to be uh, get in close mm-hmm. with everybody else so they warm warm uh, themselves up. Right. Yep. Number nine. Spit not in the fire, nor stoop low before it. Neither put your hands into the flames to warm them, nor set your feet upon the fire, especially if there be meat before it. Oh, wow. There's a show on on, uh, cable TV, and it's about this guy who cooks. He cooks very... Sophisticated meals, but he does them over a fire in a fireplace, like you'd see at Mount Vernon or some colonial place. Huh. Okay. And I can't remember the dude's name. He's a German guy. Okay. And uh, he's real, uh, real uh, American history buff. And it is amazing what you can do with just a fire. Yeah. And and a, and a, a griddle or a, or a Dutch oven mm-hmm. or one of those hanging or the, whatever those pots were right. called. Right. Right. And he makes everything in there. That's wild. But uh, read that one again, though. Spit not in the fire. That's always good not to do. Yeah. Nor stoop low before it. Neither put your hands into the flames to warm them, nor set your feet upon the fire, especially if there be meat before it. Oh, so don't don't try to warm your hands or feet up by sticking them in the in the fire. I guess that's just it is bad manners, especially with your feet near the food. Mm-hmm. And uh, I guess it shows uh, the, the part about putting your hands near the fire. I mean, you see, I, whenever we have a lot of fires in our fireplace in the in the, in the winter time in the fall, and uh, I'm always doing that, putting my hands I down to warm to warm my hands up. But yeah. I guess it's just bad manners. I guess I never that that one I've never heard before. Yeah. You know, I, I've never heard that. I um, guess there's something about about uh, appearing. I guess it's it's a it's a showmanship thing. To some extent, that you don't want to look like you're cold. Maybe. Maybe it's just always to look, you know, have a poker face yeah. type of thing, and yeah, or in your activities. It, it could be. What's number ten? Number ten. When you sit down, keep your feet firm and even, without putting one on the other or crossing them. That's a good one, but everybody crosses their legs now, don't yeah, they? Yeah, they do. They do. But and I happen to agree with that. I think that does look better. When I when I've tried, I'm, I'm putting both feet on the floor now as I'm talking. Don't mind. <laughs> it's very uncomfortable. It, well, if you're used to having them crossed, or if you're used to, to crossing yeah. your your at your legs I, at your I ankles. I cross them down at my ankles. Right. You know. And uh, but then that makes you, that makes you sit improperly. And also makes uh, cuts off circulation to some extent too. <laughs> it does. Yeah, it's not good. And it's the same thing with crossing your legs. George was no dummy here. No, he, that, that is, I agree with. That's but I, really I see why he had these written down and would reread them to himself over and over again mm-hmm. because it's easy to fall out of those. If you if you form the good habits he's talking about, it's easy to fall out of. Yep. Yep. What's nuts what's number eleven? Number eleven. Shift not yourself in the sight of others, nor. <laughs> I thought, when I read this, it just made me laugh. Nor gnaw on your nail. <laughs> That's great. Read that one over over again, and try try to stay calm. Shift not yourself in the sight of others, nor gnaw on your nails. <laughs> that's, that's great. Number eleven. That's lucky eleven. Oh, that's Shift funny. Shift not yourself. I can imagine. That's like the baseball player I was talking to about earlier. You know. Yep. And don't be shifting yourself. Gnaw on your nails. That is awesome. Gnaw on your nails. When when I was a kid, other kids in the class always were gnawing on their nails. Yeah. My brother used to always bite his nails. Constant. I mean, he bit them so bad he'd make them bleed. And the teachers would always be on everybody. I, I never did. I just I just had a, a mother and a father that was always, all, they were intent on keeping the nails short. Yeah, and my father used to get so mad at my brother. He used to say, boy, I'm going to throw Tabasco sauce on those nails so you don't <laughs> knock it off. <laughs> well, it is kind of, it's kind of you know, crazy to look at people doing that all the time. Yeah, it is. Because then they would bite the nail off and spit it out or whatever or do something else with it. It's yep. terrible. But, uh, I can't believe we're going to break already. Uh, uh, time flies when you're having fun. Yep. Well, folks, we'll be back with more of George Washington's uh, Rules of Civility and Decent Behavior. 
The viewpoints expressed on Liberty Works Radio Network are not necessarily those of the network, its affiliates, or sponsors. This is Liberty Works Radio Network. Now live from coast to coast and around the globe, more real talk, the kind you want, on Liberty Works Radio Network. We're back. This is Nichols and Hale, Liberty's Warriors on the Liberty Works Radio Network. I'm Bill Hale, and with me is the beautiful and multi-talented Joanne Nichols, and we're talking about... George Washington's Rules of Civility and Decent Behavior. Yeah, some of these are great, man. And these they're, are like, hun- they're like Saturday Night Live. No, they are. <laughs> there's, a, there's 110 of them, so we're not going to get anywhere near through, all, through them all, but, uh, but uh, we're on number uh, 12 right now. Yep. And uh, what's number 12? Shake not the head, feet, or legs. Roll not the eyes. Lift not one eyebrow higher than the other. Wry not the mouth. And bedew no man's face with your spittle by approaching too near him when you speak. <laughs> Wait, what do you a, read, number 13? There, there's a lot. Let's, well, let's go through number 12 first. It, it, it says, what's the first uh, clause in there? Shake not the head, feet, or legs. Roll not the eyes. Lift not one eyebrow higher than the other. Do you think these are what we're talking about when people are speaking? Mm-hmm. I, I think when someone else is speaking, you, I guess he's talking about courtesy. Right. Um, not to, you know, if you don't believe them, you should just try to keep the stone face instead what, of... What if your leg's gone to sleep, though? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that, that's kind of tough, I know. Read, read that start to finish again. Shake not the head, feet, or legs, roll not the eyes, lift not one eyebrow higher than the other, wry not the mouth, and bedew no man's face with your spittle by approaching too near him when you speak. <laughs> so don't spit on people when you talk to them, okay? Last well, one was tough for me <laughs> as a kid because I had a, I had a lisp. I had a lisp that's worse than the... Than the, than the uh, <laughs> speech defect I have now. <laughs> <laughs> Number 13 is awesome, man. What's 13? Kill no venom as fleas, lice, ticks, and see in the sight of others. So stop picking those fleas off of yourself, will you, Bill? <laughs> Read that one again. Kill no venom as fleas, lice, ticks, in the sight of others. Vermin. Vermin. Kill no vermin as as fleas, lice, ticks, et and et cetera, in the sight of others. If you see any filth or thick spittle, put your foot dexterously upon it. If it, <laughs> if it be upon the clothes of your companions, put it off privately. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and if it be upon your own clothes, return thanks to him who puts it off. <laughs> That's awesome, man. That's that's like that's the best. That's a Seinfeld show right there. It could be. Yeah. It could be. George George must have had some sense of humor, huh? I'm sure he did. What's fourteen? Fourteen. Turn not your back to others, especially in speaking. Jog not the table or desk on which another reads or writes. Lean not upon anyone. I'd love to tell my kids that one when they were little. Don't don't lean on me. Oh my goodness, yeah. The, the, with the uh, when you're speaking in court, it's uh, there are some courtrooms that are very well designed, and you can you can be more or less facing the judge and facing the jury at the same time, uh-huh. and uh, you're not you're not turning your back to one or the other. But the worst, the very worst designed courtrooms I've ever seen are in Howard County in the mm-hmm. circuit court, because uh, the judge is is in front of you or is. At one end of the room, the jury is at the other end of the room. Wow. Directly opposite. That's ridiculous. So if you're talking to the judge, your back's to the jury. If you're talking to the jury, your back's to the judge. That's terrible. And it, there is something about that that, that uh, it is, does show <laughs> disrespect to someone if, you, if, you, uh, if you're talking and, and your back is turned. Yeah. Or if they're talking to you and you turn your Do back. Do you constantly say, excuse me? You know, when, no. No? No. No. When, when I'm rolling, I'm rolling. <laughs> but, but, <laughs> but I try to make some comment about it at the at the beginning of the, of the uh, of the proceeding, so that uh, like in my opening statement, so that people know I'm not right. 
and and they don't they don't even notice it at first. But it, it, George, George is pretty sharp. Yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. But you know he's he's that was two he died two hundred years ago. So we should disregard everything he says. Is oh, what, of course. That's what people say today. Oh, of course. And, and we're not allowed to talk about dead people. Isn't that what somebody told me the other day? And he's an old white man, you know. Yeah. And so what did he know? Yeah. What did he not know? allowed to talk about the dead. Folks, these are George Washington's rules for civility and decent behavior, and he read these to himself over and over again and, and compiled this list uh, during, his, uh, during his youth, and these are some things that helped him become successful. Uh, what, what, which one are we on now? Fort- okay, 15. 15. I mean, you know, this is pretty obvious. Keep your nails clean and short, also your hands and teeth clean, yet without showing any great concern for them. Hmm. Playing it cool. Yeah. He's playing it cool. Yeah. But that's like when you go. That's like when you're near the fire. Don't stick your hands or feet in the fire. Yeah. It, it's just no it's, flossing on the first date. <laughs> on the first date. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's no flossing during the first year of marriage. Yeah, right. <laughs> the other one's presents. That's right. Okay, sixteen. Do not puff up the cheeks. Do not puff up those cheeks. So what do you okay? think that means? I have no clue. I have no clue. Do you think it's always a sign do of disdain? Do you think it's tobacco, chewing tobacco or oh, something? Oh, it could be. could be. Do not puff up the cheeks. Lull not out the tongue. <laughs> Yours just came out. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't mean, I didn't mean to. Rub the hands or beard. Thrust out the lips or bite them. Or keep the lips too open or close. Wow. Pretty wow. weird, isn't it? I Read mean, that one again. This, that's, that's a long one. That's a tough that one, too. A, that's a tough one. Okay. Do not puff up the cheeks. Lull not out the tongue. Rub the hands or beard. Thrust out the lips or bite them. Or keep the lips too open or closed. Mm-mm-mm. That's tough. Yeah. Now, folks, if you're if you're following with uh, with us at the, your computer, you can uh, Google these. I believe they're on are online. Yep. Again, and, it's uh, called George Washington's Rules of Civility and Decent Behavior. And you can read along with us, and you can also uh, uh, we're not going to get through through all of them probably, and uh, and you can take a look at them. I, th- it's I've always enjoyed listening to, to successful people or or reading about them because I, I would always think, well, maybe I could do what they did. Mm-hmm. And even if I didn't could become as wildly successful as they were, I could improve where absolutely. I where I am. That's absolutely. I need improvement. That's my my wife my do. wife tells me all the time I need yeah. improvement. What are we up to? Seventeen. Seventeen. Be no flatter, flatterer. I'm sorry. Be no flatterer. Neither play with any that delights not to be played with. I, I like that. I think that's yeah. very true. Yeah. Well, when I tell you that you're the beautiful and multi-talented I Joanne, I, I, it's, truth. It's, it's, it's truth. It's it's the truth. It's not flattery. It's not a joke. It's, it's and I don't a, it's like truth. it. I don't like it when that happens because it ruins everything. Like if you're a friend, trying to be friends with somebody, right? And if you're trying to do work and get something accomplished, when you cross that boundary line, it ruins everything. It just does. I'll try to remember that in our next show that I won't. won't. (laughs) You know, I mean, it's just I'm funny about that kind of stuff. That's not appropriate. I don't know. know. I think you eat it up. (laughs) (laughs) I think you just protest too much. No, I really don't eat it up. But the second part of that, be not a a flatterer is the first part. Yeah. Uh, Neither play with any that delights not to be played with. Right. It's teasing people that don't like to be teased. Yeah. Now, I do that all the time. Uh, we got to stop poking at Obama. No. I... Some of those people in the Maryland GOP, too. You think so? Yeah, and some of those conservative talk radio hosts that I'm friend you because they can't take it. <laughs> they start it, but then they can't. You know, they can't take what they Joanne, Joanne has a has a had a had a friend on Facebook named Bruce Elliott, who has a local show in in the Baltimore area uh, on talk radio, and he he loves to uh, attack us uh, yeah, because he doesn't like me. Call me a jackass. Right, right. But and you've been I'm called worse. Just, well, yeah, I know. But and I'm supposed to just take that? I don't care who he is. You you didn't unfriend him, did you? No. Uh. Uh-uh. Uh. No, he can he can call me whatever he wants to call me, and I'll call him whatever I want to call him. 
but you know, but he, some guy I don't know who he was jumped in to the middle of it, um, and he tore Bruce Elliott up one side and down the other, and he did a pretty good job. I, th- I think one of the nice things about Facebook, and I, I should not have gotten on it years ago when my kids did, did up a, a Facebook profile for me and everything, but I, and I, I went along with it and started playing with it and became became addicted to it but mm-hmm. and that, that's bad to be addicted to anything but one of the nice things about it is you, you know, Lyndon Johnson used to say if you if uh, show me a man with no with no enemies and I'll show you a man with no friends and uh, and uh, the reason I bring that up is because when somebody attacks me on Facebook usually there'll be a lot of people who attack them back mm-hmm. I don't have to say much at all right, and, right. and and people said to me where do you find those people I said I just just talk with them on Facebook. And we're friends. They yeah. <laughs> they watch my back. I watch it. Watch watch theirs. And right. you have the same oh, situation. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, well, I, and I've come in and defended you. Um, and I, I appreciate. Yeah, it. I have. I, don't I appreciate like that, it. You know, when people say things that are untrue about you, like um, you know what a um, consistently losing politician had to say about you. Oh, but oh, his initials are Dan Bongino. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah I didn't like that. That was pretty. That was pretty funny. It I th- really was pathetic. Is I what thought it was funny. I, w- I always it's wondered. Really sad. I wonder if it was one of his campaign people that I, wrote I, that I, in I his name. I wonder that myself. Because that seemed, that was such a stupid thing didn't to say. It re- didn't seem like something that uh, was a very wise. I, I laughed very hard when I saw that. Yeah, I, I don't believe it was him. It might not have been. Uh, I'll if, give I'll give him the benefit of the, of the doubt. I'm not not going to vote for him, but I give him the benefit of the doubt but that he. One, but the, but that one road, do it at your own peril. When he wrote that, uh-huh. that sounds like something he would say. As I've know, heard him say things like that. You know that's true. That's yeah. true. I've heard him say, "Do it at your own peril." I've heard him say that with his own lips. So well, okay. Sounds, so maybe it was him. That sounds like um, a Bongino uh, line. Maybe it was him. And, and a, a friend of mine named Jeff Brown. Who's also a friend of Bongino's, uh, changed his profile picture right after that 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 uh, brouhaha took place, and it was a lot of people commenting on that. It was kind of funny. Is that but, right? But uh, but uh, he he uh-huh. changed his profile picture and put him, put in one with him and and Bongino, and I, I think maybe with Hogan. I'm not sure who the other third person was, but uh, <laughs> but uh, people were saying, "Oh, nice picture and stuff." I said. I said something smart alecky, a uh, nice picture except for the guy on the right, right. which was Bongino. Right. And then he, he said uh Jeff said thanks a lot Sharon. And thanks her, a lot what? A uh, Sharon. Oh. And you know that woman Sharon whose first name is Sharon, I won't tell her last name, who oh, was right, one of Bongino's right. campaign people right. who started the whole thing and was the one who said yes he is in favor of sodomite marriage and he yeah. she didn't call it sodomite but uh yeah. but uh but anyway, the sort of she let the cat out of the bag. Yeah, she she really did. Well, it's, it's good. It's funny. It if, is good. If you go into the bushes and, and if you're a, 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 a you send a dog into the bushes to flush the birds out, right? Mm-hmm. Every once in a while. Yeah, I'm glad it, somebody finally told the truth. It's fun to flush the stuff out. You know, I mean, if she would have just told the truth and left it at that, I would have had a lot of respect for her. Yeah. How do we get off that? We're so we're supposed to be civil and and uh, and know. and being decent and well, and we're probably not being that way. Have a lot of work to do. <laughs> We do. What was number set? Was that the last one? Was seventeen? What seventeen. Was We're on eighteen. Read that one again, though. On seventeen. Yeah. Be no flatterer. Near neither play with any that delights not to be played with. Yeah, I got to work on on that a lot. Especially, the, I I like flattering people because pe- people enjoy it. And if it's <laughs> if there's truth in it, if there's truth in it, it's a good thing to do, I think. But if you're telling a fake, oh, if you're telling you're, a lie, it's you're not. Teasing all the time. I'm talking about. But but teasing teasing. Somebody's really. I'm a bad Cross teaser. A yeah, I'm a bad teaser, and and especially when you do it in writing, people I can't don't mind tell. Teasing. Yeah. That I don't mind. We'll see. We'll see later on. I'll tease the heck out of you. Find out. Read no letters, books, or papers in company, but when there is a necessity for the doing of it, you must ask leave. Come not near the books or writings of another, so as to read them or give your opinion of them unasked. Also, look not nigh when another is writing a letter. That's all. There's something just basic about that, isn't there? Yeah, very basic. Whenever I was writing something and my brother or sister would come by and wanted to look at it, I would always say, no, don't do that. I don't yeah. even know why I did it. Right. But, that, but it must be a basic human yeah. right to privacy type Yes, of it is, yeah. 
We ought to tell on this safe. <laughs> that's, that's so true. <laughs> Folks, we're, we're going to go in and we'll be back in five minutes with more of George Washington. And we're back. This is Nichols and Hale, Liberty's Warriors on the Liberty Works Radio Network, uh, coming to you from beautiful downtown Westminster, Maryland, where the sun is starting to set here. And uh, I'm Bill Hale, and I'm with the beautiful and multi-talented uh, Joanne Nichols. I'm not supposed to flatter her. I'm telling her the truth. <laughs> and and we're, we're, go- we're going over, among other things, George Washington's rules of civility and decent behavior. These are 110 uh, maxims or proverbs or sayings that, that he wrote down over the course of his youth, and he read them over and over again during the course of his life. And, of course, as, as you all should know, he was an extremely successful soldier and politician and uh, businessman in all kinds of different businesses and was always looking to, to improve himself, and that's what we're doing here, too. And what, what number are we on, Joanne? Um, let's see. We are number 19. And, and the reason we, we're going through these things is, number one, we're having fun. And no, number two, um, it, they point out things. I know that, that, that during the break, Joanne and I are talking about, I need to work on this one, I need to work on this other one, and, and it's all stuff we, we all need to work on probably. Yep. I mean, maybe you all are perfect out there, but I know that I'm yeah. not. Yeah. And Joanne is almost, she's very nearly yeah, perfect, got, but not perfect. I'm starting to see a nail hole on my palm. <laughs> <laughs> What's our next one? Okay, 19. Let your countenance be pleasant, but in serious matters, somewhat grave. Huh, let your countenance, that's your face, folks. Let your countenance be, pre- be pleasant, but in serious matters, somewhat grave. Right. All right, well, that's good. That makes sense. Yeah. The gestures of your body must be suited to the discourse you are upon. Wow. I wonder what the heck that means. Read that one again. This is number 20. The gestures of the body must be suited to the discourse you are upon. I guess don't be doing jumping jacks while you're trying to talk about uh, suppose. religion or something. I suppose. Our, our, our engineer just, just piped in and said, said your body language should match what you're saying. <laughs> and that's, I guess it's a more modern. I guess if George would have written that one down if, if he was living in these day, this day and age. But it means the same thing. Yeah, I guess yeah. it does. Yep. What's number 21? Reproach none for the infirmities of nature, nor delight to put them that have in mind thereof. Read, read that one one more time. Reproach none for the infirmities of nature. So if the guy's got a lamp or something or, or, or a... Uh, one eye that's crossed or right. something like that. Nor delight to put them that have in mind thereof. Uh, don't, so don't make fun of people. Don't make fun of people, don't, and don't don't remind them of the of the the tick they have or right. the or the uh, the limp they have or anything else. Well, that's just you, that's just being a, a, a yeah, good that's, Christian. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Show not yourself glad at the misfortune of another. Though he were your enemy. Wow. You and I need to work on this one. Oh, I know. I, I get really delighted when people I don't like. And that, you know. and I, I do, too. And I think I think most people do. And that that's that's not good. No, it's that's not. not it's good. terrible sin. And, and, and I know that I get really mad at people and say so-and-so should go to hell or whatever. Yeah. But hell is forever. Yeah, I, don't want any, is. I don't even want Obama to go to hell. Well, I yeah. do. <laughs> <laughs> Joanne, you better work on that. You I better. want him to go to hell. In fact, he, he's going to hell, okay? Well, th- there's, there's always, where there's life, there's hope, is the old saying. I and, think, and, I uh, think he's a sociopath. Maybe, right? maybe his conscience is so is so uh, he has seared no that, that he... I don't that, think he has one. Yeah. yeah. But we, need to, we all need to work on that one. Read that one again. It's number 22, right? Yep. Show not yourself glad at the misfortune of another though he were your enemy. So I guess all the fans at football games, if, somebody, yeah. if, if the other team fumbles, you should just say, oh, that's too bad. Yeah. Oh, oh. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, sugar. Yeah. Gee. <laughs> I feel terrible well, that's, for you. But that's true, though, because, mm-hmm. cause, I mean, it's easy to delight when when your friends are doing well or you're doing well, and it's, and it's, and it's easy also to, to be nasty when, Somebody else doesn't do yep, well. Yeah, If they're not, Especially if they're, somebody that you don't like, right? If they're not your friend, it's easy to be nasty. If right. they're your friend, is yeah, you, you're sympathetic. But right. but we're supposed to do unto others as we would have them do unto mm-hmm. to, 
All right, 23 is, when you see a crime punished, you may be inwardly pleased, but always show pity to the suffering offender. That's a good one. That is a good one. Yeah, because you know, no matter what that person did, how bad it was, um, there are people too. Yes, they are. And there's uh, there but for the grace of God go go I if if our circumstances were different. Right, right. Boy, number 24 was written for me. What's that one? Do not laugh too much or too loud in public. <laughs> <laughs> I well, have, like, you know, one of those laughs that you can hear it out of every other laugh in the room because it's so loud. It's like a canned laugh. So is that right? So when somebody when when somebody says something and you you laugh, it, I roar. Oh, okay. So people say, well, I'm not sure what the guy said, but Joanne, that's Joanne laughing. Yeah, it's like a <laughs> like a cackle of a witch or something. I know, it's really gross. Well, it's not as bad as Hillary Clinton. <laughs> see, I, I, see, there I go. I should not have said that because that's not being uh, decent or or civil, is it? It's okay. I, I laughed. It didn't bother me. <laughs> yeah, but we're tr- we're trying to improve ourselves here, okay. Joanne. I know. What, what's the next I one? I have a lot. Of what, what number are we up to? <laughs> <laughs> Super, superfluous compliments. Superf- superfluous. Superfluous compliments. And all affection, affectation of ceremony are to be, my eyes are so bad, are to be avoided. Yet where do, they are not to be neglected. That's hmm. number 25. Read that one more, one more time. Superfluous. Super- Superfluous compliments and all affectation of ceremony are to be avoided, yet where do they are not to be neglected. There, there's one thing uh, that uh, <clears throat> I've been to a lot of dinners at, at, uh, at different academic functions at the University of Maryland and other places, and, and uh, if somebody's going to speak, they have somebody come up and introduce the next guy not the, not the speaker, but they'll have like four people introduce the speaker. They'll have one guy come up and introduce the second guy, and the third guy, and the fourth guy, and then finally the speaker's introduced. Mm-hmm. And it is really that's that's showing aff- too much affectation and, and too <laughs> yeah. much ter- too much ceremony. Exactly. Even when the guys have, that, 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 that's ultimately being introduced is, is a big big shot. Right. Yeah. But I guess everybody loves it a little bit too far. It, it is. Yeah. It is. But where do you know, be nice to the big shot. Right. Okay, number 26. In pulling off your hat to persons of distinction as noblemen, justices, churchmen, etc., make a reverence, bowing more or less according to the custom of the better breed and quality of the person. Among your equals, expect not always that they should begin with you first, but to pull off your hat when there is no need, is affectation. In the matter of saluting and re-saluting in words, keep to the most usual custom. Now, that's that's one thing that's a little out of date, and that and that men just don't wear hats anymore. No. And uh, back in those days, you had to wear a hat uh, all the time, or not, or at least in the warm weather. Mm-hmm. I mean, excuse me, at least in the cold weather. Yeah. And even in the warm weather, uh, you just to, and when you're riding your horse and all, your hair would blow all over the place if you didn't have a hat on. Yep. And uh, but uh, I guess there were all kinds of things for for uh, or, or stations of society, and there still are stratifications in in our society and the different class levels. But but uh, it, they seem to be um, blurred more today than they were back in those days, probably. Okay. What number are we up to? Twenty-seven. Tis ill manners to bid one more eminent than your than yourself be covered as well, as not to do it to whom it's due. Likewise, he that makes too much haste to put on his hat does not well, yet he ought to put it on at the first, or at the most, the second time of being asked. Nor what is herein spoken of qualification and behavior in, in saluting, ought to be observed in, t- in taking of place and sitting down for ceremonies without bounds is troublesome. Well, that's number 27? Yep. That was a long one, too. That was a long one. Would you do that one one more time? <clears throat> yep. Tis ill manners to bid one more eminent than yourself. Be covered as well. Wait a minute. Is there a semicolon or anything after that? 
Is ill manners to bid one more? Then to, no. Tis ill manners to bid one more eminent than yourself be covered as well as not to do it to whom it's due. Likewise, he that makes too much haste to put on his hat does not well. What do you think it. that means? I don't know. You're not supposed to uh, too much, use too much haste to uh, to tr- to make up with the big sh- uh, to uh, to suck up to the big it. shot. I don't get it. Yeah, I don't. I don't get that one either. Had yeah. to do with hats. <clears throat> and that's one. Uh, now he's an old white man. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's, that's exactly he lived 200 right. years ago, but but yeah. uh, I'm sure there I'm sure there's starting some, to sound like those college professors now. There's there's nuggets Old of white man. There's, there's, I'm, I'm just trying to be funny. <laughs> so I'm, I shouldn't try to always be teasing, but because uh, he says not do that. But uh, by the way, did you see any of those new James O'Keefe? N- no. Videos of, about the, of bo- the college people. No. What are oh, they about? It's bad about the Constitution. Oh, it's not good. I saw something on Facebook where where some some college uh, professor uh, uh, was was approached by somebody who uh, was putting them on, I think, and, and said, you know, this this Constitution that was just handed out on the quad really offended me. Mm-hmm. That's and, it. And then uh, is that the one? Mm-hmm. And and she takes it. And they shredded it. And they shredded it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And to make the person feel better. Yeah, and th- that wasn't the worst one. I mean, no. some of them are way worse. Yeah. Really? Oh yeah. They they say all kinds of crazy things. See, this is what discour is discouraging to me, uh, because I, we are going to have to fight these people. Yeah. Because there's so many of They're them. Really you're not going to you're not going to outvote them, and so if we're if we're going to maintain a decent society, it's it's going to come down to fighting. Well, I tell you what, they're not going to be hard to fight. They may not be hard to fight, but they're going to have to be fought. Yeah. And they may have. And they may have. Uh, I was just seeing something else. Uh, I guess it was. Uh, I heard Alex Jones talking about Delta Force a couple days ago. That one of the one of the the, the last tests that they're given. These are these are super you know super duper soldiers and you know, real tough and rough and all that stuff. But but that rhymes too. But but uh, mm-hmm. but uh, uh, they. Have, they have to come up with a, with a attitude that the ends justify the means. Mm-hmm. So basically, they'll they'll do anything. Yeah, they'll do anything. These and, people will do and, anything. And that's really horrible. Horrible. And it's it's unchristian, and it's it's uh, it's it's not, even if you're not a Christian, it it goes against it should go against I mean, your conscience. I mean, some of these classes, you know, I remember when my I mean my kids were in college a long time ago, and I can remember, you know, some of the classes that I. I would pay somewhere around twenty five hundred, three thousand dollars for a credit. Right. That's how expensive it was. And this was a long time ago. Right. Ago. Um, I remember my daughter coming home one time. She couldn't get a class she wanted, so she had to take some class about women's studies or something. And she would come home and say, "This this woman's teaching me to hate men." Right. And I said, "What? What?" And she was. She said, "I'm telling you, she's." She's tell- she this woman hates men, and she's teaching all of us to hate men. And I, I think I paid like three thousand dollars for that class. Wow. And I was furious and wrote a letter to the dean. Didn't do anything. Right. You know, she was probably some tenured loser, you know. But um, this was a long time ago. So I guarantee you, it is way worse now. Yeah. Way worse. Yeah. You know. I, I wouldn't. I'd be afraid to have my kid in one of these places. I went to Duke, and yet Duke was started off as Trinity College. It was down at I-85 somewhere. What it wasn't I, any I-85 back in those days, but it was a, a, a small Methodist school that the Dukes endowed, and they changed the name to Duke. And they moved it to Durham, and it was a Christian school. Their big, their big icon is the big chapel and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was talking to my son about the, the football game last week. They sort of got jobbed in the last play, and Miami beat them. Right. Strange play, but but uh, I was thinking how terrible that was, and I opened up the Duke Alumni Magazine. On page 44 is a 1978 graduate of Duke who writes a long article about how great it is that he was finally able to marry his husband. Yeah. <laughs> when I saw that, I thought, I will never, I hope Duke loses every football and basketball game for the rest of yep. time. And yep. if, if, if something falls on the place and crushes it. Yep. it. It's just so, a Christian school overtaken oh. like that, infiltrated and overtaken, sickening. it is sickening. But folks, we're coming up to a break, and uh, we'll be back in five minutes with more of George Washington. 
And And we're back, folks. This is Nichols and Hale, Liberty's Warriors on the Liberty Works radio network. And uh, I'm Bill Hale, and I've got the beautiful and talented uh, Joanne Nichols with me. And we've been going, we had a whole bunch of topics we were going to do today, and we sort of threw all that out the window because we got got, uh, hung up on, not hung up on, but we got involved in George Washington's rules of civility and decent behavior. And there's 110 of them. We got through 27 of them in, a, in, a, in a, about three or four segments. And what we're going to do in this last segment, if it's all right with you all, is uh, we're going to go to the, to the last one, number 110, and work our way back because okay. there's some juicy ones at the back. What's 110? Labor to keep alive in your breast that little celestial fire called conscience. Now, there you go. George Washington talking about conscience. He says labor, work at, to keep alive in your breast that little celestial fire, that means God, right? Mm-hmm. Fire in your breast called conscience. And everybody's got one, whether they believe in God or not. And uh, it's whether you listen to it or not that often determines how you how well you do in life. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting that old George had that one uh, as, uh, as last but not least there. What's number 109? 109, let your recreations be manful, not sinful. Let your recreations be manful, not sinful. So I guess... You should go out and maybe uh, play some type of game or ride your horse or or, or, or go shooting or something like that in, instead of uh, yeah, going to the whorehouse. Yeah, animals, not women. <laughs> <laughs> that's, one way, that's one way of putting it. it, it and uh, and it, that provides some food, too. So, yeah, so, so exactly. Go on animals, not women. Right. So let, let, read 109 again, well, how George said it, not, how, your, not how Joanne said let it. Let your recreations be manful, not sinful. Very good, very good. 108. When you speak of God or his attributes, let it be seriously and with reverence. Honor and obey your natural parents, although they be poor. Wow, there's the the, uh, fifth commandment there. Fourth is the way the Catholics count it, but fifth is the way the Protestants count it, is to honor your father and your mother. And uh, what was the beginning of that one again, number 108? When you speak of God or his attributes, let it be seriously and with reverence. Now, he was always talking about providence and celestial fire and that sort of thing. And A lot of people say that, oh, he was a deist because he said that. Right. But, you know, that's not true. People take the Lord's name in vain or they speak about God today, and I'm, I'm very guilty of this myself, in a, in a way that that, uh, that back in those days, people thought was taking the Lord's name in vain. Mm-hmm. We're doing being too flippant about it, right. or, or 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 being too casual about it, or being being too uh, 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 ir, what's unreverential or irreverent mm-hmm. about it, rather than being reverent about it. Right. What's number one hundred seven? One hundred seven. If others talk at the table, be attentive, but talk not with meat in your mouth. <laughs> That's a Sounds good one. Good to me. <laughs> uh, Mom and Dad always told everybody that one too. You know, don't mm-hmm. don't eat with your uh, don't uh, talk with your with food in your mouth. That's right. One oh six. Set not yourself at the upper end of the table, but if it be your due, or that the master of the house would not have it so, contend not, lest you should trouble the company. So there you go. That that's right out of the Bible, isn't it? Mm-hmm. When you go to to, to a to a feast. Take the last place is what Jesus said. Take the last place, and so that if if they want to move you up, you'll be moved up, and that'll be an honor. Mm-hmm. And if if uh, you take the high place, and they have to move you down. It's it's hard on the on the host, and it's hard on you. Right. So he took that one right out of the Bible. Yep. Yep. Way to go, George. Be not angry at table, whatever happens, and if you have reason to be so, show it not. Put on a cheerful countenance especially if there be strangers, for good humor makes one dish of meat a feast. That's wonderful. That is wonderful. Especially at mealtime. Yep. And uh, and just to be to be nice to everybody else and, yep. and, and not show it. It wasn't. Yep. Also gives you a chance to cool off. Yep. Yep. That's a very good one. Yep. 104. It belongs to the chiefest in company to unfold his napkin and fall to meat first. But he ought then to begin in time and to dispatch with dexterity that the slowest may have time allowed him. (laughs) 
so so let the big shot at the table mm-hmm. or maybe the host or it might be the host and the big shot let him get started first let him dive in yeah let him dive in yep okay you know that, that's especially when you're dealing with with uh, with young men or teenage boys mm-hmm. <laughs> they need, they need to hear that one because yeah, they they're really always do just cr- uh, crashing through the food before anybody else has even uh, put any on their plate. Absolutely. Yep. My my husband's came from a, a family of four boys, and there were just forks coming at you, <laughs> you know? I mean, when you put food down, it's like every man for himself. They just, it was unreal. I, I couldn't believe it. I and mean, I wasn't brought up that way. I was brought up, you don't right. do that, you know? So it was really offensive to me. My mother used to say, act, act like you're superior to your food, you know, mm-hmm. that, 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 that you live, to, you eat to live, you don't live to eat. Right, exactly. Although she raised, she raised my brother and I, who we, we, we lived to eat. Yep. And, uh, <laughs> and so we needed a beating, and we got, we got one every now and then. Yeah, but we, yep. uh, we, we deserved every one of them. Yep. Okay, 103. In company of your betters, be not longer in eating than they are. Lay not your arm, but only your hand upon the table. Uh-oh. I take my elbows off the table now, and yeah. uh, and uh, and when they stop eating, then we got to stop, huh? Yep. I guess that's polite, but but uh, I guess today one of the one of the things about uh, about being a male in today's society is uh, this is really isn't a complaint. I'm really kind of glad of it, but <laughs> but but the women of uh, who are, who have cooked the food, they want to move that food. Right. They don't want it left over. They want you to appreciate the food. Right. So after you've had two helpings, it's uh, you know especially Thanksgiving, Christmas, right. those days. They want uh, to start packing it up. They want well, no, they want to. Oh, keep, they want you to. They, keep they want you to keep eating. Okay. So I try to help them out and be not a nice guy and help and help eat it up. Well, that's why I've. I've uh, yeah. I've increased my pants size many, <laughs> many times <laughs> since well, that's, college. That's a good time to do it, Thanksgiving. I guess so. Yeah. And if you if you don't eat the rest of the year. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. 102. It is out of use to call upon the company often to eat, nor need you drink to others every time you drink. Read that one again. It is out of of use to call upon the company often to eat. Nor what do you think he means by that clause there? That if, if, if you're calling them and they don't come, uh, don't you have to call them again and again? Yes, it's, ru- it's rude if the food's ready not to, uh, to the cook yeah. not to go eat it when it's ready. Right. What do I you think don't the, know what it means. What, do, really what does the second clause say again? Nor need you drink to others every time you drink. So you don't have to make a toast to others, you mean? I guess. Okay. I wish George was here. I'd like to ask him that. That one would right be now. pretty cool. I try to do it. Probably wouldn't understand him, and he wouldn't understand. Well, us. I think he th- probably thought think I was too flippant. But. Uh, well, I know. I know he'd think I was too <laughs> flippant. He would. He'd probably never seen a woman like I like I am. Oh, I, I don't. I think human nature hasn't changed since Adam and Eve. I think there's there's yeah. Look at the book of Proverbs, and. and uh, and there, there was one in there about uh, it's it's. Uh, well, I, won't, I won't think. I'm not going to repeat that one. But uh, but there's uh, human nature hasn't changed in the in whether it's been around. We've been around thousands of years or millions. I think it's thousands. But but uh, that's why history repeats itself all the time. Right. Okay. Here's a good one. Rinse not your mouth in the presence of others. That's a, that is a good one. It's going to be kind of tough to do that next time I get my teeth cleaned. Huh? Well, that's at the dentist's office, though. <laughs> that but is an awful thing. I guess it? I guess also at the end of a rinse of your mouth in the presence of others, you're going to spit it out, too. Yep. Cleanse not your teeth with the tablecloth. <laughs> <laughs> the napkin, the fork, or the knife. But if others do it, let it be done with a pick tooth. With, with a with a with t- a pick tooth. Okay, I guess he means a toothpick, but yeah. with a pick tooth. Say that one again from Cleanse the. Cleanse t- your teeth with the tablecloth, napkin, fork, or knife. But if others do it, let it be done with a pick tooth. Okay, all right. That's great. Drink not too leisurely, nor let nor yet too hastily. Before and after drinking, 
wipe your lips. Breathe not then or ever with too great a noise, for it is, for it is uncivil. Well, it really is. Yes, it is. My 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 aunt would would uh, I had a, a wonderful aunt Margaret. She was never never got married and and uh, and she was an extra mother. I mean and. Uh, uh, she would always say, "You're drinking too fast. Don't drink that fast." Because we, you know, I guess when I was a kid, I would gulp, 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 gulp. Yeah, right. These are important. Yeah. It is. I've, I've stopped doing that, Aunt Margaret. I have. She's oh. been dead for many years, and and uh, but uh, I finally did stop, probably at about the age of fifty or so. Everybody had an Aunt Margaret. I have one too. You know, nobody's named Margaret anymore, though. Yeah, nobody is named Margaret. All these, all these. I had in my class early on. I had uh, Dorothy and and Doris and right. all these names, and they're all gone now. Yep, it's weird. They were nice names. They were nice names. Yeah. Drink not, nor talk with your mouth full. Neither gaze about you while you are drinking. That's pretty obvious. Put not another bit <laughs> into your mouth. Till the former be swallowed. Let not your morsels be too big. There you go. That's a good one. As a as a yeah. as a former uh, teenage boy, <laughs> I, I violated all those rules over and over and over again. Hard for men. It is because we're pigs, men, basically. Well, and when you're hungry, you're hungry. You know, men. You know, they enjoy their food. And we're pigs. Well, <laughs> you know, they do. They they enjoy their food. It is unbecoming to stoop too much. To one's meat, keep your fingers clean, and when foul, wipe them on the corner of your table napkin. There you go. So and don't and don't bend over like the food. That's another thing my mother used to say to me. You know, don't don't put your face in the food. Bring your food up to right. your face. That's right. That's exactly right. Sit up. Yeah. Yep. Sit up while you eat. Sit straight up in the chair. I, I remember getting yelled at all the time. Put not your meat. In your mouth, to your mouth, with your knife in your hand, neither spit forth the stones of any fruit pie <laughs> upon a dish, nor cast anything under the table. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> chewing gum. Is there chewing gum under there? Oh, my God. That's great. If you soak your bread in the sauce, let it be no more than what you would put into your mouth at a time. And blow not your broth at ta- at the table, but stay till it cools of itself. There you go. That's a good one. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. You just stir, stir that soup until uh, it gets yeah. cool enough to eat. Yep, and don't slurp it either. Right. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> Folks, see, we're doing, we're doing uh, wrapping up a few of these uh, George Washington's Rules of Civility and Decent Behavior. I think they're on the Internet. And they really are interesting, interesting to look at because yeah. it, it's a lot of wisdom in there, plus a lot of them are pretty funny. Okay, here we go. Entertaining anyone at the table, it is decent to present him with meat. Undertake not to help others undesired by the master. That's a tough one. That is a tough now, one. Now, a lot of times when he says meat, it's like the Old Testament meat. It could, means all types of food, not just, yeah, not just beef or, or pork or chicken or something like that. But read that one again. Entertaining anyone at the table, it is decent to present him with meat. Undertake not to help others undesired by the master. Huh. I guess. <coughs> I guess that may mean that uh, if the if the if the the uh, host doesn't want people at the table, don't be inviting people. I guess. Take no salt, nor cut your bread with your knife greasy. How weird. So what are you supposed to do? Lick it? <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet that's the other one right before. Don't lick your grease off your knife. <laughs> Make no show of taking great delight in your vic- victuals. Feed not with greediness. Cut your bread with a knife. Lean not on the table. Neither find fault with what you eat. There you go. I love that word victuals. They don't you don't see that anymore. No, you don't. That's that's an old that's an old uh, <clears throat> King James Version Bible word. Yep. Folks, it's time for us to wrap up. Well, we hope you had some fun. We had some fun today. We didn't cover the topics we thought we were going to cover, but I think uh, it was a good a good uh, discussion light. anyway. It was a light one yeah. today. We'll see you with the grace of God next Wednesday. Take care, everyone. Bye bye.